Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Levi McCurdy. Another week, another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. And if you can't tell by the thumbnail and title and everything else we've been pushing this week on social media, episode 55 is a very, very special one. We have my friend, uh, none other than the host of the Attack at Random podcast, Jeff Alvarez, the Crimson Nerd. You can check out his podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Anchor, pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts these days. Listen, man, it was a great Great conversation. Uh, If you don't know Jeff, go follow him on Instagram and Twitter. All of his links will be down in the description below. We talked about everything from the news to Dragon Ball Z, me getting into anime, uh, Funko Pops, nerd culture. And dude, Jeff lives in Florida, man. So uh, you know we covered some Florida topics and the things going on down there. Um, It's a very serious situation with the alligators and the sharks. And of course, the people who are naked in wheelchairs rolling down the street of Florida. So there's lots of things to be said. It's a full-blown two-hour conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please give my guest a round of applause, thumbs up, subscribe, follow him, follow us, everything you need to do to support this episode. This is episode 55. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Alvarez. Jeff. Jumping right into it. First of all, how are you today? Good? I'm doing pretty well, man. You know, just another Friday, relaxing, chilling, relaxing, all cool. Dude, it is Friday. I didn't know. I thought I thought yesterday was Friday until about 12 o'clock. Uh, it was about 12 <laughs> o'clock until Megs told me that it was uh, actually Thursday. And so um, here we are now on Friday. Thank God. But yeah, dude. So jumping right into it. I mean, news of the week is you can't you can't get past it. Uh, we're getting 10 K from Biden, baby. Some of us are getting 20. Okay. Uh, are you, are you in this pool? Are you with me here? Did you go to college? Yes, I did. I'm looking, actually looking forward to, um, getting some of this loan forgiveness because man, has it been screwing me up lately? (laughs) Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, so right. uh, Have you been now, have you been paying on your student loans this whole time or have you been paused with everyone else for COVID? I actually paused it for COVID like everybody else yeah. did and did a, some deferments after some right. time. Yep. Um, so I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this kicks in fully because this is going to help me out tremendously. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think it, and it, and it, uh, and it will. And you know what, dude, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because, um, the world is like divided right now. And it's, uh, I'm sure you've seen it on your timelines and, uh, it's fun with the funny thing is the funny thing is we all knew this was coming, right? The news of this broke like months ago, like Biden was probably going to do the 10 K thing at the end of the payment pause and announce it, blah, blah, blah. Like we all knew this was the plan, but now that he's finally said something about it, everyone's up in arms, right? Like about, you know, what about the people who already paid their loans off? What about the people who didn't go to college? Like there's about 12 posts on my Facebook wall right now of people like, well, you're welcome. I'm paying your student loans for you now. And I'm like, well, unfortunately, I don't think that's how it works. But like, hey, man, sorry. Like I don't like (laughs) fucking every other country is free to go to college. So like, what do we, why aren't you mad at that? Like why, like, you know what I mean? So I think it's, uh, where, where's your side of that fall on? I'm, I'm definitely on the side that I'm, I'm happy. This is finally taking, taking hold. Um, this is something that's, I feel like it's overdue. Mm -hmm. And I, part of me also was not expecting it to even go through because of, you know, a lot of people blocking stuff like this. Right. But I really like the fact that, you know, our tax dollars are going to going towards something pretty useful compared to like other things, you know, like I really would like free healthcare because, like you know, healthcare. well, of course. And because, you know, they yeah. haven't been like, I don't know, maybe like, let's not send $70 billion to Ukraine. Like, is that yeah. necessary? What are we doing with that money? Like, could we not have put that in? And like, who's, um, 
what's her name? Her face, the governor lady, uh, or the she works for the government, Marjorie Taylor, Marjorie yeah. Taylor Green. She uh, <laughs> she says, and I quote: "The student loan forgiveness is completely unfair." But she got her entire $200,000 PPP loan forgiven. Like, bro, let me tell you something. Listen to me right now, okay? My two businesses, yes, we filed for PPP. We got some money. I got like five grand, dude. Like, it was like, it was gone. Like, that was my rent for like two months. Like, it helped. Like, that's what I used it for what it was supposed to be used for, you know? Uh, and like, you know, Justin got some of the employees, everything like it was meant to do what it was supposed to do. And I was fully committed to paying it back. Okay. And like, when they told me like, Hey, you're probably not going to have to pay it back. I'm like, Whoa, that's great. That's awesome. Good for us. Do you understand? (laughs) Do you understand what would have fucking happened if I just would have added one more zero to every one of those applications? (laughs) Um, like if I could have, if I would have known, like, dude, I heard like a fucking podcast got 50 grand. Like I, when I found that out, you know what I mean? Like it just, so if I, if honestly, if I would have added an extra zero to both of those applications, I could have bought you and all of my friends a new house. Like it, so it's like, do you know what I mean? And now it's just gone. And so people were complaining because, you know, mm, 10k for you is not 10k for me because I decided not to go to college. But like, sorry, like I I don't know how to help you. Like, what what college did you go to? I actually went to Hack um, for like two or three years. Okay, got screwed over tremendously, and right? And stopped going to school for a little bit. Okay, and started taking online classes with Southern New Hampshire. Uh huh. And completely dropped that because I wasn't feeling it. Got it. Yeah, I think you're the second person this week that told me they're going to Southern New Hampshire. Um, But so how did, how exactly did Hack screw you? What happened there? Um, So essentially what happened was um, one of my English classes, I had a final project where I had to present like a a resume type of thing to in front of the classes. I did my project, but during one of the, the classes, I had to go meet with my advisor who was in Harrisburg. Mm-hmm. I explained to the teacher that I had to go there and I was going to miss class. She basically said that if I was going to go, I was going to miss out on everybody else's presentation and it, she would fail me. So I told that to my advisor. He said, just come anyway. He'll deal with it. Okay. So, so I went and she failed me. It put me on academic suspension. I tried to get in contact with my advisor multiple times, completely got ignored. So I just basically got like a big F you from hack. So ever since then I, I am anti hack. So your advisor thought he had strings to pull when he really didn't. And your, your failure stood because you missed class and the professor says what goes. So, okay, great, great. Yeah, no, I went to the art Institute. And so I kind of, I kind of, honestly, it's, it's unfortunate, but I kind of wish I went to hack, but, um, because the art Institute sells you the dream, right? They're like, mm-hmm. Hey man, we're it. So even though hack is like the the price that it is like, you know, 30, 40 grand, listen, our hundred thousand dollar education is worth it because you know why? Listen, you get an art kit. Okay. And it comes with a carrying case and a big canvas and lots of sheets of paper and lots of pencils and markers and crayons for you to draw with. Okay. And listen, we're going to throw in a one terabyte flash drive, hard drive for you. Okay. We're not going to give you the MacBook Pro. You got to go get that on your own. So it's technically a hundred and five thousand dollar education. And so, you know what I mean? And like they sold you that dream. And like I will remember till this day, my mother said, hey, lady, don't tell this kid, a.k.a. me, how much this costs, because if he figures out how much that money is, he's not going to come here and he's not going to get an education. And so they shut that conversation down very early. And so then I was just coasting because they said, hey, you're accepted. You don't have to take SATs. We just need you to come in and take this placement test so we can figure out if you need to take math one plus one or if we can put you in algebra. And of course, coming from tech, I was math one plus one and basic English and Ron Ross classes that you literally just had to breathe in and you got an A. I swear to God, every kid will tell you. And so like, you know, I was there and I cruised through it for three years. I had an internship out of college and blah, blah, blah. And I've been working up since. But what came to my understanding was when the person I was working with 
And the last company, which I now own, by the way, so boss move that shit, moves to you, bitch. You know what I mean? So let's not, you know, whatever. But I found out that she went to hack. I went to the Art Institute. We paid 80% difference in price, and she was making 80% more than I was, like more than double I was at the company. So things didn't start to add up in my mind, and that's when I started thinking, hey, man, like all these other for-profit private schools and like everything else, like I'm pretty sure, dude, hey, I think Hack is free now. Like I'm almost positive your Hack, I think you can go for free. Oh, shit. I, at least they're doing something good now. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I'm. On, it might just be a course or two. I don't know. I, I might be wrong, man. But listen, uh, whether this is good or not, uh, for some people and all people, hey, it's happening and there's nothing we can do about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, listen, man, Jeff, uh, introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are, where you come from, what you do. From my understanding, it's uh, the Bronx in New York, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was born in the Boogie Down Bronx. Um, has I've been moving around a lot since childhood. I've lived in Ohio, Massachusetts. I've lived in Puerto Rico for a, a couple of years. Jesus. Too. And I finally settled in uh, Pennsylvania when I was like, what, maybe 10 mm -hmm. or so. And then I started going to, uh, I went to Central York Middle School for one year. And then I transferred over to Hannah Penn. And then I actually went to tech also for, for high school. Yep. Yep. So, what were you? Besides that, what were you at tech for? Um, I was actually there for architecture. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Did our paths were we? Did our paths cross in high school? Most of it's a blur. I mean, I'm not sure. Do you remember? I'm pretty sure I might have seen you around in in, in high school. Same thing with um, Justin. Yeah. But I was always that that kid that I stuck to myself. I was the quiet one, the loner. I never really fit in with any group. So like I had like my own specific niche of friends and everything. So yeah, I might have seen you around here and there, but never actually like um, communicated or talked. Did you acquire a Spark shirt anytime in high school? Did you receive a shirt from me with my name on it? <laughs> No, I didn't know you were actually doing that at the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. See, and that's, dude, and that, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's how fucking segregated, like, your wing of the school was and, like, ours was. Like, the one the one time junior year, it was, like, 20, 2009, 2008, 2009, I stood at the top of the stairs on, on our side of the wing because I was in culinary. So I was in the front of the building. Where, you were in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the way in the back. So while you were getting dropped off at the bus in the back, we were in the front and I had a duffel bag full of 75 shirts with my name on it that I was just passing out to kids as they came into the school. <laughs> and then like we all wore them. I'm, you've probably seen it. You've probably seen someone wearing the shirt. Sorry, not to brag. Uh, but anyway, so you're you're into a bunch of stuff. Um, and I believe, you know, we've we've worked together before in the past and you've helped us out with some photography stuff. How's that going? You're still we're still doing that. Yeah, I'm still doing photography and been trying to work on video a lot more lately. Mm. Um, it, I came down to Florida just to pursue more of like the automotive photography side. Yeah. And I moved in 2019 and that's just like right at the the beginning of COVID. Right. And as soon as that hit, it shut everything down and it was just hard to get like any, any type of clients related to cars. Right. So lately i've just been transitioning more into like real estate photography and okay. trying to do more artsy like style photography yeah and trying to build something off of that and also podcasting on this on the side yes and that's and that's my next bullet point but i want to before we get there um so how's the how's breaking into the real estate photography going is that uh have do you have clients or friends there i'm i'm sure you know a couple real estate brokers i'd imagine uh i know a couple like one or two, but in a completely different side of Florida. Mm -hmm. So of course it's going to require some traveling, but it's, it's a hard market to break into if you don't have, um, the, the, if you don't have the network to, yeah. to do so. And yeah. what I've noticed, it's there's a lot of real estate photographers down here. So here's the issue, right? And we've we've Justin and I, I mean, we've we've tried to do it multiple times. We've had multiple realtors as brides and grooms, and they've been like, Hey, you guys should, you know, jump into this and get into this. We'll give you houses, we'll do this, we'll do left and right. 
but like the at that time like 2016 to 2019 essentially 2020 to into covid it was it was fucking ready rock and roll go 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 yeah. like those houses were getting flipped like the housing market was insane for the last 5 years and i mean obviously it's crashing now as interest rates are fucking through the roof uh but like you know what i mean so it's not a um it's not a uh, uh it's it's just not the same as it was and so when we would go it would be like hey we'll have the video done in a week and we'll have the gallery done in four or five days and they're like what they're like we'll have contracts on monday they're like we're we don't even we're just gonna we need these this this, this needs to be done like tomorrow and we're like, well, wh- what? And so like, you know, obviously it's, it's doable, but I mean, if you, if you can't like commit at that moment and back then it was like, you know, 2018, 2019, we were doing 60 weddings in 2019. So like it was, it was insanity already. So there's no way yeah. we can throw real estate at it's turning them around, especially on the weekends. It's like, you know, when, especially when, even when we have weddings now, if you go back through the history of this podcast, you'll see that like not every episode's clipped and the ones that aren't is because when I recorded it on Thursday or Friday, we had weddings that weekend and I just didn't have time to clip them out. And by the time I got to it Tuesday or Wednesday, I got to record a new episode. So what's the fucking point? And so Mm -hmm. it's like, it's just the, the rapid fire pace of these industries. And so, but I mean, but Godspeed. I mean, if you're, if you're in there, um, and getting it done, uh, I think it's great. We're, um, I've seen, uh, if you can get, if you can get into like, I know DJI, I just dropped a new, uh, FPB drone. If you can get into drone real estate, that would probably be dope. Yeah. I've actually talked to a couple of real estaters and they mentioned, you know, drones is like the biggest thing down here, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to commercial property. Mm -hmm. So I honestly, I have to work on my drone skills because I, it is, I'm terrible at flying drones. Well, again, and it's just something, yeah, it's something we've always talked about, but it's never something we've executed. I mean, let alone getting like certified or licensed or FDA Mm -hmm. clearance, FCC, whatever it is that we need to quote unquote fly in the airspace, you know, uh, so we don't piss off the government. But like just that alone is a process. Like I only know like two guys that have it. Every other wedding drone pilot we talk to, they're like, yeah, I don't know, fucking, I don't know, I don't have it. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm just throwing this bitch that. up for five minutes, and then I'm getting my shot, and then it's coming right down. You think anyone's gonna say anything mm-hmm. here? Like, no, obviously not. Like, no one's ever gonna say anything. But like, I'd want to do it by the books. And so, but I mean, hey. Uh, I'd go for, I don't, so I think, but here's the issue. I think if you're doing, well, I guess you'd still want to get aerial shots. Never mind. I was just going to say, if you could whip a drone through a house, I don't know if that requires a license because you're technically not in the airspace. Maybe True. loophole, maybe, you know, <laughs> I don't know. but I mean, and then two, but then two. So then how would you, how would you think to deal with just the ever evolving iPhone 14 camera that every real estate agent can just throw an Instagram filter on and sell their house in two days. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see with stuff like that though, it, I feel like it still comes down to marketing because yeah, any, anybody can grab a camera or an iPhone and, you know, snap a photo, mm-hmm. but you can't like match the same quality or the same skills when it comes to like an edited photo of you know, the interior of a, of a house or even because I've dealt with this, like, you know, a detailed shot of a car. Right. <clears throat> I've had so many people tell me, you know, like, oh, I can take this with my with my phone. Yep. By all means, go ahead. Yep. Let me see. Right. Let me see. it. Yeah. Hey, let me see it. Hey, let me see. Show it to me. Go <laughs> ahead. And then it's like, right. Oh, dude, we um, we just did this. We just did it. Uh, uh, we just did a, a bride and groom. Dude, let me tell you this. This shit is insanity. This is he was a car guy and you will probably appreciate this. I believe I want to say he had a Subaru. I want to say that's what it was. Once you see the picture, you can probably laugh and tell me I'm completely wrong. But I mean, this thing, he put his heart and soul. Like, I mean, this he probably put 40K aftermarket into this thing. The engine alone the bride told us the engine he got shipped from europe over covid came in on a huge pallet paid 12 grand to some guy over in europe and then he just put it in the car like no big deal 
like, hey, hon, I, I'm going to just drop. <laughs> I, he just spent 12. I mean, obviously, they're going fucking money. But like, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll put the pictures up on the screen. So they wanted to do a nighttime shot with smoke bombs and the headlights and, and our lights and everything else. And dude, they turned out dope. Uh, I'll send them to you then. But like, hey, couldn't get that with an iPhone. Okay. Right. Does your iPhone go up to 64,000 ISO? <laughs> no, but my Sony A7S three does, you know, or whatever the number is. Justin will grill me on that later. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he is. I, yeah. for a fact, he is. Yeah. I, I think it's way higher than that. I think we can go higher than that. You, you tell me. <laughs> uh, I think like mines can go up to like what? 2,600 or even past that. Yeah. Right. But whatever, dude, like when you mentioned about the, you know, importing the the motor from like Europe, that's mm-hmm. a pretty like super common thing and spending like 12 K it's, it's a lot, but that's about standard for for that type of market. Right. Right. And so now, and so the, let me ask you this now that, so our groom with the, the 12,000, so that 12,000, just for the engine, let's just assume it's probably, it's probably 50 grand deep into the thing already. What, do you, what would he, or what would you, what do you do with a car like that? Like you're not driving that to the grocery store, I'm assuming, but like, yeah, obviously you go to car shows, but like, do car shows have like awards or cash prizes for like the best car? I didn't assume so, but what, what do you, is it just an expensive hobby? Like, what do you, how do you, what's the ROI on that car? Resell? It's a little bit of, a, a little bit of both. Yeah. Depending on the person, it can definitely be just more of like a, a collector's item. People just want to build it to have it and, you know, to either look at it or drive it occasionally. Mm-hmm. Then there's other people that will put it into shows and you can win cash prizes, trophy sponsorships and, you know, more, more clout and mm-hmm. everything like that. Sponsorship. Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> right. Okay. So then maybe got it. So that's where you come in to take the bomb ass photos of their car that they can put on their Instagram that now has a million followers because they have your photos and not the shitty ones they were taking with their iPhone and that million followers they can elevate with sponsors, branding stickers on the car. Hey, I'm going to this show. hundred thousand people are going to show up. Give me money. Yep. Uh, Okay. Smart. I don't think he's doing that, but it's very smart and I like it. Something I wouldn't do, but certainly, certainly something else. Uh, so what else, uh, what else do you do, man? What, when you're, when you're not working, we don't need to get into work. That's fucking whatever. That's whack shit. (laughs) What, uh, what do you do when you're not working, not taking photos, when you're not talking to me at this desk? What are you, what are you doing? Is that it? Oh, shh, Jeff, Jeff, do I see, do I see a PS5 in the back? Jeff, yes, where'd sir, you yes, get sir. it? Jeff, where the fuck did you get PS5, Jeff? Yo, Jeff. Let me tell you how, how difficult it actually was. To you got the plug. This. Let me see. Let's go. I need to hear it's, because because none of my friends can get it. Well, obviously one now. So go. So there's actually a guy that I follow on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like uh, Matt something. I got a guy um, on Twitter like when the drops hit, like when they're restocking the times, the codes, whatever. Yep. yep. It might be the same guy. But, so I've I've been on his page constantly, and you know, since I work from home, I can you know right. just hop on uh-huh. and get on got eh, get on that. Yeah. So I got lucky with a, a Best Buy drop <sighs> and got it like within a week. Nice, nice. So are you? Was that when they required you to be like an elite ward awards member? I think actually no, no, it, it was, was just regular just standard. Simple, uh, there yeah. was there was one there was one one of the drops and you had to be like their premium subscriber or whatever and I was like well that's bullshit have you now when when you did that any trickery how many browser tabs did you have open how often were you refreshing what was your gameplay did you have a script in play what'd you do I need to know <laughs> I had my phone my tablet on the same page mm-hmm. um, since I had multiple laptops I had both of them running up. Um, basically just, you know, Gang. clicking add to cart yep. on multiple devices, yep. whatever. And once I got one on there, yep. I just had to rush in and check out immediately. Yep. 
Hell yeah. Dude, Meg's um Meg's dad. It is it's kind of it's not it's is not as thrilling as a PS5, but he is like at a very old age into coin collecting. So like yeah. he's just buying like the 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 US nickel from 1967 because this one has a fucking P on it and seven M and it's worth nineteen dollars instead of five cents. Like that's just you know, whatever. But like, so then the U.S. Mint, for those of you who don't know, will release error coins on their own. So when they find these error coins, they'll keep a batch of like 100 of them because they know they resell for value. So then the U.S. Mint will sell these quarters that are errors for like 20 bucks. And then once you get them, they're immediately worth 250 and so, like, this one time a couple summers ago, he was like, yo, this air quarter's coming out. I need your help. I got a guy at work. I got my phone. I got my tablet. I got my laptop. I got this. I got that. When I tell you, I mean, I, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. I had browsers. I had my phone. I was trying to get this $20 quarter for this old man. And, like, I couldn't fuck it. Like, it was insanity, dude. At 12.01. It's crashed, it's gone, it's out of stock, it's there's error message, it's just whatever, some it's loading. I had it in my cart, but like there was an error processing, of course, or some shit. Like it was insane. My uh my buddy Paul, who uh I do my Patreon episodes with, hey, go to patreon.com backslash what are you doing? It's only a dollar. Listen. I know at least eight people that I employ who I give more than a dollar every other week. And I only have one fucking Patreon person. So I'm going to start, you know what? I'm going to make it my company policy that you must subscribe to my Patreon if you want to be employed by me. That's it. I got it. We figured it out. I'll be a millionaire in no time. I'll just take, I'll give my employees money and then just take it right back. And then just, you know, and then just keep it going. (laughs) It's just in and out of their pockets into mine. But listen, so uh, I talked to Paul, and he, he has scripts. Paul has scripts for, like, GameStop, Target, and, like, three other websites that he just, when he knows a drop's coming, he just clicks a button, and he copies and pastes it into the terminal of Chrome, and boom, bam, it, it adds it to the cart, adds all of his billing information, adds all the shipping, boom, 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 targets the ID of the button that, that does it, and it just, and it does it for a second, and he still can't get one. Yeah. There's like quicker bots out there that somehow, and you know what I just realized they're probably doing? They're probably loading the sites on the lowest like Internet Explorer 7. And it's probably just loading a very basic HTML version only <laughs> of the site. And that's how it's loading so quickly for them. And that's how they get through checkout so fast. Maybe. Maybe. Because all of our browsers are loading like the fucking JavaScript, the ads, the bullshit, the cookies, the whatever, the whatever, whatever. But if a bot loads it on like IE9, it's probably not going to do any of that shit because it's outdated and it's not like that code anymore. Maybe. I don't know. That could be, that could be a possibility. Like I've, I've known people that have like multiple, multiple bots just hitting different yeah. websites just yeah. to get... A yeah. bunch of different things. Dude, I, we just talked about it yesterday on the Patreon episode. The flip game is fucking insanity. Insanity. I just told oh, Paul, yeah. I'm seriously considering signing up for a $50 a month, like five zero fifty dollar a month Discord server that gives you access to like these deals before it goes viral. Like when leaf blowers at Best Buy are ten dollars and they resell for three hundred. And people were going and buying like 30 of them at their local fucking, uh, you know, Home Depot or whatever, or like a price glitch or just whatever. Like Sean Mendez tickets, fucking shoes, dude. Dude, the shoe game. The shoe game is a game that I don't understand. I wear, I listen to me, Jeff. I have three pairs of Crocs, one of which Justin stole and he now owns permanently. (laughs) And I have a pair of Adidas that I wear when I want to be either A, fancy, or B, go to weddings. I have three pairs of shoes, two of which are Crocs. I don't do shoes. I don't match my shoe. Are you a shoe guy? I used to be. Not anymore, though. Yeah. Because what happened? All of your money is gone? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just so hard to get a lot of these, like, really good shoes. Like for the longest, I've always wanted the uh, the Yeezy Red Octobers. I was just about to ask you if you're a Yeezy yeah. guy. Hell yeah! 
I was I really wanted those, especially when they first dropped, when they were actually affordable. Mm-hmm. Now they're like twenty grand. You're right, right, right. And that's it's, what, and that's just what I'm fucking. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm fucking talking about. And it's just like it's this. Ooh, it's this very interesting game that no one, well, people understand it clearly, but like I don't. I don't get it. I, I actually know somebody out here, and uh, he lives in Orlando. That he'll go to um, these big conventions out yep. here and get the rat, and, the silicone wrapped, yep. the fucking five hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, pop, 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 and then he goes to sells them to celebrities for fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, two thousand dollars a pair. Exactly. More than that, and he's been making bank on it too. Right. I can't knock him on that, but like shit, dude. I just, I just told, I just told Paul the story yesterday. Megs and I went when I was like doing the flip game, the Gary V thing. I did it from like end of 2019 to end of 2020 before COVID hit, and then I kind of just stopped, obviously. But um, we found a original Mister Mike from Toy Story. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, Toy yeah. Story, the cassette player with the microphone. You could play your cassettes, talk through it. Goodwill, three dollars. Took it home, threw the Backstreet Boys original album cassette in it. Fuck yeah, it worked. <laughs> Got C batteries because no one has C batteries. It worked. Scrubbed it up with some alcohol, cleaned it up, sold it on eBay in 24 hours for like 300 bucks. It was Shit. insanity. It was like the biggest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it's just like, and Megs found it. I passed it. Like it was almost something we weren't gonna do. Uh, it was insane, but, um, so, so I did, I asked you to, you had one piece of homework to do before this podcast is your PS five, your nerdiest, most valuable, expensive thing that you've prepared today, or is there something else coming? Well, besides the PS five, of course, um, because it's probably what that's probably worth. You could sell that shit for like what? Two grand probably. Yeah. Depending like between like what? 700 to, to it's insane. 900 maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah but, but so what, go ahead. I was gonna say like the the most nerdiest like favorite piece of mine is actually this um it was a gift it's this like crimson red like um vegeta funko pop there it is look at that wow is that and that's a that's a funko exclusive yeah (sighs) i have no idea where they got it from but yes it was a gift okay Um, along with another figure that um my brother that's in the Marines actually went to Japan uh-huh. and he actually went to one of the, uh, like a little local shop and had a bunch of like, uh, figurines. Nice. So got, a got me a super saiyan God Vegeta straight from Japan. Yep. Nice. So that's probably like one of my favorites too, just because yeah. it's not from this country at all. For when, and presumably made in China, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> like it's straight from the, so- yeah, dude, that's fucking sick. Now, listen, I'll, I'm not going to, I'm not going to front here in front of anybody. I have no idea what anime is. The only, mm, I'm sorry. Don't, whoa, whoa. <laughs> let's back up. Don't let me cap myself here. I, I know some anime. Okay. Listen, I've watched Pokemon. Okay. That's anime, that okay? Yeah. I know about Yu-Gi-Oh. I know about that blue-eyed dragon, okay? I know about <laughs> that Magic the Gathering Black Lotus that Post Malone's got for 800000 okay? I know what I'm doing. I've seen some anime. But other than fucking Pokemon, bro, I know fucking nothing. I know nothing about anime or those characters that you just held up. Uh, so, but, so, where, so where should I start? If I want to get into anime past Pokemon... Uh, or, and, le- and I'm not, here's the thing. Keep in mind, mm. Mm, I'm not big on reading. So like subtitles, okay. meh, mm-hmm. if I have to, I will. If like the story's banging, but like maybe English dubbed anime for a beginner go. First, let me ask you this. Mm. Um, what kind of mo- movies do you like? Do you like horror movies? Do you like, you know, hor- like crime documentaries? Mm, like what's your go-to type of show damn bro that's a loaded question that's a loaded question i have a plex server with over like three thousand movies on it if you want access to it i'll give it to you let me know after the show 
Um, but it has everything from rom-coms to gore to, bro, I'm a sucker. Like Sharknado, I want to do a podcast series on like Sharknado and like Six-Headed Shark Attack <laughs> and like Mega Octopus versus Giant Shark. Like all those stupid piece of shit sci-fi movies like Killer Couch mm. and fucking the Tire movie on Netflix, whatever those I fucking love those because I can just turn it on and laugh because it's hilarious and it doesn't make any goddamn sense. But Megs will not entertain it. She thinks it's the stupidest, most ridiculous thing. And she's right. And she's right. She's right 100%. It is stupid and ridiculous, but that's why I love it. You know what I mean? Okay. So we don't see eye to eye there, but I'll love a stupid sci-fi. Like I, I'll watch all the Sharknados through a weekend, but I also mm. am down with like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Star Wars. I mean, you name it. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. So I, I'll take, okay. I'll take anything. All Sorry right, I, for I not a, answering your question at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good couple of uh, ideas for you. Okay. Um, one, it's by far one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see in like in the back here, mm -hmm. I have like these black books. Mm -hmm. It's a show called Death Note. Death Note. I have like, heard of this. I have heard of this. You and your anime community got mad at Netflix two years ago because they did a yes. terrible job, correct? Correct. Okay, see, I know more. See, it's all <laughs> you just got it the trigger words, you know, and then my MK Ultra comes out and now I know shit. You know? Yeah. So <laughs> Death Note is like one of the animes that I recommend to anybody that's new to okay. it. Okay. More so because it's a uh, more like a true crime with some supernatural elements to it. Mm. And it's pretty easy to follow. Mm. Now, some of the things may be outdated because it came out like late 2000s. Sure. So, right. but it's it's definitely watchable for somebody that's, you know, right. never seen anatomy before. And where do I watch this on Crunchyroll? You can watch it on Crunchyroll. I believe it's on Hulu as well. Look at me. Look there at me go. dropping. You know it, I know it. what Crunchyroll is. Hey, you know what I mean? I know some things. So it's okay. So it's animated. Is it in English? Is it an English show? It is. Okay. It is. All right. Well, listen, I will, I, as a promise to you, my friend, I will watch an episode. Should I just start season one, episode one, or is it different? Is it weird? What should I do? Yeah. Just start season one, episode one and give it maybe like two, three episodes. See how you like it. Got it. Okay. And I, I'm assuming I'm I'm looking at Death Note 2015, the TV series, and not the 2017 film. <laughs> stay That's away correct. from Netflix. <laughs> I should stay away, stay away from, from Netflix. Stay away from the live action, live action movie. That was, that was terrible. <sighs> terrible. Really? Was it? Wow. It, it was okay. bad. Okay. It's, I mean, it's most of it's. It's just the movies. Listen, I w here's the thing. Like, I was against, like, dude, Pinocchio's my go-to Disney movie. Like, the original mm -hmm. shit. As a kid, like the whales scared the fuck out of me. Like they sent the fucking bad boys to the little island where they turned me into donkey. I didn't want to fucking be a donkey. <laughs> I didn't want to fucking be a donkey. And then like five years later, when I grew up, at, at like 15 years old, my father, he's got fucking four donkeys out front. You know what I mean? So like it's just full circle for me in my life. It's weird. Story for another day. Don't ask me about the donkeys. <laughs> it's true. We'll talk about it later. But yeah, like, you know what I mean? Later. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it was dope for me back then. Mm. And like, and then when they said, yo, it's Tom Hanks. And then, you know, they're going to make it live action. I was like, Hey, no one asked for this. No one wants you to do this. Like, like the, like the live action Lion King just. Yeah. I, no one asked for fucking, there was no emotion when Beyonce was singing on the face of a lion. Like it just didn't make sense. Like they didn't even show, do you know why it failed? Because they didn't show it to anybody. Like honest, a hundred percent. Like Disney said, Hey director, we trust you. It's the fucking Lion King. You can't fuck it up. You do what they did before. You can't fuck it up. Guess what he did? He didn't do what they did before. And he fucked it up. And they're like, hey, we trust you, bro. You don't got to show it to anybody. Just fucking export it, MP4, send it over on a flash drive. We'll send it to the theaters. No big deal. And so, obviously, we got what we got. And, like, it's like, dude, what are we doing with the fucking 40 bi Bro, <laughs> don't even get, let's, okay, here we go. We're, we're so off topic based on the notes, but that's okay. This is what makes a great episode. I need someone to talk about this because I know you have opinions why can't we make a decent Batgirl movie? 
hey, more than less, why can't we make a fucking decent DC movie? I haven't watched shit on DC since the Dark Knight trilogy. And if you think anything past that was good or watchable, I guess Wonder Woman, they said, was okay. What are we talking about here? Wonder Woman was like the only good like in 12 DC years film after yeah after the every marvel Dark movie Dark every year makes a billion fucking dollars in three hours what are we yeah. doing and and i think it's it's more the 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 company itself like it's not warner brothers but the the studio that's funding all of these movies yeah they they try to have too much control and not letting the director you know do their thing right. that's why Zack snyder left <laughs> halfway through his movie and then we got that terrible <laughs> fucking justice league movie man Okay, oh but God. and like, let's even just even talk about the fucking the casting here. Like Gal Gadot, got the Wonder Woman is the only one they've got that's fucking decent. Ezra Miller just got charged for fucking grooming kids and fucking breaking into houses, drug on alcohol, going through whatever the fuck he's going through. Ben Affleck's busy with J Lo. He can't do any more fucking Batman films. But guess what? He's coming back because the wedding was expensive. You don't get married to J Lo with less than thirty million dollars on the tab. OK, so he needs that fucking Batman money again. So he's coming back for one more movie, one more check, and then he's out again. And so like now we've got Robert Pattinson. We've got fucking him. We've got so many fucking Batmans over at DC going on. I haven't seen the Robert Pattinson Batman, but I heard it's phenomenal. And it's like, can we not? Why did we not just copy and paste Robert Pattinson's Batman with the chick from there to do the Batgirl movie? Like, I understand we're trying to be inclusive and we tried to give like a minority a fucking leading role. And like we were trying to bring back uh, what's his name? Uh, Birdman, little buddy, the fucking the uh, Michael Keaton. Like he's coming back and, and, and was supposed to be back in Batgirl. But like, guess what? A hundred million dollars just couldn't cut it. And now the movie shelved for good. We're going to show it to a few people who worked on it because they deserve it. But then that's it. But yet we're putting fucking movies like Cats with Taylor Swift and her fucking shining asshole as a cat on the fucking big screen. And we can't make a Batgirl movie? Talk to me, bro. Like, what's going on over there? I still think it comes down to, like, the studio. They try to have too much control in what they want shown. At this point, they just need to reboot the whole entire DC universe because they're losing bad to, um, to, to Marvel. Now, and- now hear me out. My opinions on Marvel are a little not liked by pretty much everyone. I haven't seen, here's how far I go back. I haven't seen the first Black Panther movie. I stopped watching after like Guardians 2. Like I didn't, fi- I didn't see Infinity War. I didn't see mm-hmm. in whatever, Endgame. I know what happens. Everyone knows what happens. But yeah. like, it, I just, I can't, I can't fucking with, and then the fucking, the, the t- t- TV shows and the Disney Plus series and the fucking YouTubes and the I Am Groots and the animation and, and the comic books and the fucking movies and the three hours and the, and the wars and this and that. And it's just like, and now we've got, we've got announcements. We've got announcements. We've got 2025 all lined up. We've got fucking Infinity Wars, Chang Dynasty. We've got fucking Avengers, fucking, the last one was great, but we're going to make another one. The Avengers. And then it's like, what the? Holy shit. It's every year. It's the same. I just feel like, listen, Natalie Portman's on my list. I have two actresses in this world that I just despise and I do not think are attractive. And I feel like we should stop putting them in movies. One of them is Jennifer Gardner. And the other one is fucking Natalie Portman. Like, no strings attached with Ashton Kutcher. She's not that fuckable. I would have fucked, like, her male roommate over fucking Natalie Portman in that movie. You know what I mean? And just, like, and Ghost of Girlfriends Past with Matthew McConaughey, fucking Jennifer Gardner. Like, babe, you're not attractive. Like, you're not. It's She's not all that. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm ranting and inventing. But, like, dude, like, the last Thor movie, I didn't see it. But let me guess what happens. Thor shows up. Natalie Portman shows up. They fall in love. That other chick is there in the realm. They fight a bad guy. They save the realm. And Thor and Natalie Portman live happily ever after. Am I close? I honestly can't tell you because I haven't seen it myself <laughs> just yet. But I've heard <laughs> I heard a lot of good things about it. But 
The whole rant from for the nothing, Jeff. The whole rant for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. No, no, no. no, but like from the stuff it's, that I heard, it's like, but, but, it's like you're spot on. But what are we talking about? Right. You get fat yeah. Thor, you get naked Thor. I think his butt was in the movie. Like, whoop de fucking do. It's Chris Hemsworth. We've all seen it. Like, it's get just can we like give me something that's good. Give me a Robert Pattinson Batman. Give me a Dark Knight trilogy. Like, can can we just agree that the Dark Knight trilogy might be up there as far as superhero movies. What's your top? Give me your top five right now. Superhero movies. Go. Top five superhero movies. It's definitely the the Dark Knight trilogy has is like probably like number one for me. Heath Ledger, Joker, done. Yes. You can't list Jared Leto. Need, just fuck it. Can we stop with the? Can we? No. S- I will admit I had high hopes for Jared Leto. Just because I, I was a fan of his for like you know thirty seconds of Mars and shit, <laughs> but sure, I, as a fucking I teenager, so baby, in a yeah. fucking rock band, but like laying in the knives and the fucker. <laughs> I felt like he he tried <laughs> way too hard, <laughs> and like you know delivering rats to the trailers of the other people because that's what yeah. fucking he thought Ledger did during his like shut the fuck kid just go go away, yeah. He, he was trying so hard to be another Heath Ledger and it fucked the entire movie up. So much. And so granted, much. Granted, I'll give him a little bit of slack because I know they cut a lot of like footage that included him as a Joker. So in the new ones, a lot more, in the new ones. Yeah. There yeah. could have been a lot more done with him, but that's where I feel the, the Joker movie where uh, Joaquin Phoenix picked it up. Cause that was just a bre- uh, breath of fresh air. And now, am I mistaken? Did they confirm is Joaquin Phoenix Joker in the same timeline era as Robert Pattinson's Batman, or is that just me wishful thinking? I think that's all of us wishful thinking because that is a completely separate timeline and universe. Because okay. they what I established that Bruce Wayne was already just a small child when he became the Joker. Got it. And so now he's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's in his, yeah. and then, and Robert Pattinson's Batman is his like second year as first year's Batman where he. I believe maybe? it was like his second year. Like he's a freshly new like Batman. Right. Like, he's that's he's why still he got like the Mustang. So right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. He's still, yeah. Okay. Well, dude, that's, I mean, perfect fucking segue into our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Entertainment Earth. Now, Jeff. Let me tell you something right now. I don't know about you growing up, but life wasn't always butterflies and rainbows, okay? Sometimes we had to beg, and sometimes we had to steal some shit that we wanted as kids. And you know what? When that brand new Power Rangers Turbo movie was released in theaters on March 28th, 1997, granted, it only made like $9.6 million. That's fine. But... I couldn't just go to EB Toys and buy the new action figures, the trading cards, the Zords, and dude, the fucking swords and the blasters, bro. The blasters. I wanted a fucking Power Rangers Turbo Blaster in my hands desperately as a child. Like, so we couldn't do it because we didn't have any money. Okay, and and to be honest, neither did our parents at the time. But now we're adults. And Jeff, that means we have adult money. And before we had like $2, little kid money. Now we have adult money and we can shop at Entertainment Earth. For 25 years, Entertainment Earth has been the premier online destination for the latest and greatest toys, the most exciting action figures, and the coolest gifts and collectibles and pop culture has to offer. From television, movies, sports, celebrities, comics, internet memes, and every fandom in between, they drop new products daily and curate uh, selections so you don't miss out. Whether you're looking for something stellar from a far galaxy far, far away with some Star Wars stuff or the streets of Gotham City eh? Uh with DC Comics, we've got surprises for everyone. Now, Jeff, let me ask you a question. You ready for this? We're going to play a game. We're going to play a game, okay? And I just need you to yell stop whenever you hear something that's not awesome, okay? Here we go. Ready? Just say stop whenever you hear something that's not awesome. Here we go. Star Wars, Funko, Marvel, Transformers, Masters of the Universe, Ninja Turtles, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, uh, Jurassic Park, anime, WWE, anything? 
It's all awesome, my guy. You know what I'm fucking saying? So you, you've won the game. And you didn't even have to stop me once. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a no-brainer. As soon as we're done here, I know Jeff and all of you are going to head straight to Entertainment Earth at ee.toys backslash wadpod. The link is on the screen in the description down below. And with that link, you're automatically going to do shopping at 10% off, and you'll most likely get free shipping too. Jeff, remember the episode of Parks and Rec? I think it was the Treat Show Self Day. You watch Parks and Rec? I've watched bits and pieces of it. Bits and pieces. You remember when when uh, he bought the bat when Ben bought the Batman suit, like the life size Batman suit? Have you seen that clip? I did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? They've got it. And when you shop with promo code WadPod, you get ten percent off and it'll ship for free. Hey, you want uh, Transformers: The Last Night uh, Megalotron Premium Deluxe Edition action figure? It's available for pre-order right now. Promo code WadPod gets you ten percent off and it ships for free. Jeff, you'll never guess what they fucking have: <gasps> anime Funko Pops, just like the one you fucking showed us, dude. There we go. <laughs> and listen, there's new ones hot off the truck. They just released them like yesterday, bro. So here's what you and everyone else listening has to do. You got to get over to ee.toys. It's not .com, it's .toys. We're being real 2025 here, people. We're in web 3.0. It's ee.toys backslash wadpod, W-A-W-D-P-O-D, and wadpod at checkout, promo code. Start shopping today. And uh, for the three ladies listening, get your man something nice, okay? Because trust me, if you're dating in 2022, there's an 89% chance that the boy or girl that you like will enjoy something from our friends at Entertainment Earth. You're going to use promo code WADPOD, that's W-A-W-D-P-O-D, at checkout. You're going to get 10% off, free shipping on all orders over $39, and we promise you won't be disappointed. Ee.toys backslash WADPOD, links down the description down below. Holy shit. That was great. I know where I'm spending my paycheck at. Hey, you know what I mean? Entertainment Earth. It's the way to go. Honestly. I mean, I just, uh, my fucking Funko, dude, how's your, is your Funko collection just that one or where are you at with Funko Pops? Because I'm, I'm mildly obsessed, but I'll explain after you go. I honestly only collect very, like, certain pieces from like certain like shows Mm -hmm. and, and media. Yep. I'm not like out there collecting all of it. It's my, so my thing with it is I have, I have a wall that, that the people can't see like these ones, like right behind me, the whole tower here. Those are just like 10 of them. I have a whole wall. Uh, but like, dude, it, I, I had to stop. Like it's, there's like 90,000 Marvel ones and I'm like, I can't mm. do it. There's 90,000 Pokemon. I have, I have one Pokemon that I bought and I said, Megs, that's for you. You, if you see a Pokemon Funko and you want to buy it for me for my birthday or Christmas, guess what? I don't have it. Get it. And did you know that? Well, you probably don't know cause you don't collect them. They have a Funko app. So like I have an app and Megs can go on and see yeah. which ones I have. And it tells me like how much the value is. Dude, Paul had a solid take. Listen to this. You're going to like this. You probably, you'll love it. Funko Pops are the physical and real life equivalent to NFTs. (laughs) 99% of them are useless, worthless, and will never make you any money. But there's 1% of them if you have the one you have or fucking what the, the one-offs, the, the crystal blue breaking bad. That's $350 that I want desperately one like those. If you have those one percenters, they're worth something. Think about it. He's not wrong at all. Like <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot of sense and it's, it's fucking spot on. So it's 2022. So I have to ask you, which, what does your crypto portfolio look like? Anything, nothing at all. We have some doge. We don't, where are we at? I had some doge for a while and uh-huh. I got some other, other coins from, you know, some mining and some, right. some trading here and there. What were you mining? Uh, Ethereum. Uh huh. Uh huh. So got some, got just some on from the, that. just on your regular gaming PC, just cause letting it run overnight. Yeah, yeah, just you know, doing a little, little something, something. Um, I, I definitely got to get some more, more crypto. I, I, I like crypto more than I like NFTs. Did you, did you withdraw it all? Are you just, are you holding through this, this fucking downfall that we're in? Where are you? Where are you at? I withdrew some of it before the downfall. Mm-hmm. So I'm lucky that I did. Smart because that. 
at crash like my portfolio yeah. tremendously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I um I mean I'm 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 always honest with the fucking numbers, but I had at its peak, like fucking Elon Musk Saturday Night Live peak, Bitcoin mm-hmm. was like seventy five. Um my portfolio was looking at a little bit like twelve grand. Um and then the things started happening Things started coming out, things started getting wavy, 2022 came, and I I took out at about eight, I took out at about eight, so I, I lost some and it hurt because I, on like the, the height of it at 12, I, I looked at Meg's, I said, yeah, I think I need to pull this out. And then she's like, well, you better fucking, you do it, do it now. You keep fucking talking about it. I'm like, yeah, I think maybe, I don't know. I'm like, let's, what if it, like, what if next week it pops? So I waited a week and then guess what? The week turned into a month and then my 12 grand turned into eight. And I was like, I see where this is going now. Uh, last I checked, I don't check anymore because it depresses me. We'll get into mental health in a minute. Uh, now if I would have kept it in, it would have been around three, maybe two. Shit. See, I, I kind of fucked myself up because I bought into the hype uh-huh. with Shiba. Oh, but bro, we, oh, so bro, 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 don't even fuck it. Yeah, we, we all did. I pulled, I put in 500 with Shiba and I pulled out at four because some idiot fucking the, the, the creator of Ethereum burned it all. And then the fucking mm-hmm. price tanked and then it didn't go up for three days. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm not losing any more money. And then I think yeah. it rocketed. I think it took off immediately after that. And my 500 would have been about 1500 and I fucking should have waited but then it's just it's mind numbing bro when let me tell you my neighbor actually it's funny she just texted me uh Mm. she gave me a hundred bucks when the whole elon musk dogecoin saturday night live saga was happening and i was i was telling all my friends i was like guys listen i got in i got in at like 15 cents i said my dogecoin right now my dogecoin 15 cents i fucking it's sitting at like it's sitting at like three grand guys. Okay. Listen, I'm in, I'm in at 15 cents. It's at fucking 50. It's at like 60 right now. Listen, this motherfucker's going on Saturday night live. He's going in front of the whole fucking country and he's going to say Dogecoin and the price is going to fucking go. I was with everybody. I was with the team. I was team Elon all the way, baby. And I said, look, just give me your, just give me your money. Give me your money. I'll put your hundred. I'll put this in. I'll put this in. I'll do it. My Robin Hood account. I'll give you whatever it is afterwards. Well, I'll fuck it. I trust me. Like we, I'm your neighbor. What am I going to do? Run away? You know what I mean? Like, so they gave, she gave me a hundred bucks. They gave me, they did this. We did that. I didn't make anything off of them, obviously. Like it was just a name. It was, you know, it wasn't like scamming people. It was just normal, whatever. And she just texted me yesterday. She was like, yo, what's my hundred dollars worth of doge worth? And like, I looked it up. It's about $10 now. <laughs> like we fucking expected this man to take it to a dollar, maybe a dollar 50. Every expert on TikTok said, look at the patterns. Look at the fucking patterns, bitch. Okay. We only see this when it's going up. We only see it when it's going up. Okay. And let's, let me tell you something. This doge coin, this, it's, Listen, all I'm saying is I've got money in Ethereum, I've got money in Bitcoin, but this Dogecoin, look at the pattern, okay? And it's like, yeah, okay. And I would see that over and over again on TikTok because that's all I would fucking see for three weeks. Three weeks was Dogecoin and Saturday Night Live and Elon Musk on TikTok. That's all I fucking saw. Dogecoin to the moon. That's all I fucking saw. And it was like, bro, I just put in 250. And then, oh, bro, the Dogecoin millionaire. You remember him? Yep. Yeah. I think he's still holding. And I think... I think his three million is like twenty grand right now. I think it's. I don't think it's looking good. No, I don't think it's looking I'm, good. So, like, just a, a quick thing about that, like yeah. Dogecoin. Before, like, it started becoming popular on TikTok and everything like that. I actually, I forgot how much I invested, but this was when it was less than a penny. When it was way less than a penny, and I had millions and millions of coins in there. Yeah, and if I would have just held on to those, uh huh. By the time it hit 50 cents, bro, like, oh, bro, I, I, we'd be I, living different motherfucking yes. lives. Hell yes. But it's one of those things where, you know, you can't really predict the future, like the game stock stock. And that dude, 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 like, I know it's what everyone says. I know everyone says the same shit, but the night before it popped, I saw them talking about it on TikTok, on Reddit, everything, mm-hmm. all of my networks were saying GameStop 
AMC. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Do I really, like, I have so much fucking, I can put five grand in a fucking GameStop and AMC right now. Probably fucking do some shit in the next year. Like, I'm fucking, I could do this right now. And I turned to Megs and I said, can you believe this shit? Like, do you honestly think this shit's going to happen? I said, I said, turn, I said, I told her what happened. I said, these big guys, they're short in their bets. We're fucking calling them out. It's, it's fucking wall street. We're trying to do some shit. It's whatever. It's the internet. What's going to happen? You never know. Like, you know what the internet said? You know what the internet told me before GameStop and AMC that we were all meeting in Nevada to storm area 51 <laughs> and you know, a couple of other things that never actually fucking happened. Like, so how am I to trust this whole AMC GameStop thing? And I said, Mace, if we fucking put, if I put five grand in right now, let me tell you what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> I'll pull it out at a hundred, you know, like it's, it's no brainer. And she's like, are you, well, that doesn't, that's not like, that's not real. Like, that's not real. Like, what are we talking about? And then I was like, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And then it went from six dollars to about like sixty. <laughs> yeah, I know people that. Um, it was actually a buddy of mine that lives in Tampa. Um, owns a like a a custom auto shop. He put in, I think it was like five grand into no. GameStop and came no. out with like no. a fuck ton of money. No. Yeah. No. Oh man. He, he came out on top on that. I was like, oh, son. It's so like the one time I, I, didn't, I didn't invest. I mean, it. we had it. I mean, I had, I yeah. like, and I mean, it was 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes. You know, there's, um, actually one of my friends moved down in Florida. Do you know, um, Jesus Christ, doesn't matter. You don't know Dylan. <laughs> um, so no, but he, and 30 minutes after GameStop took off, we were on the phone saying, bro, I was ready. And like, he was ready too. And it was like, it was the most discouraging thing I've ever I've ever seen. And it just, it, it shouldn't have happened. It really shouldn't have happened. And like, we could have, we could have, should have, would have, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. God, I was gonna say like, it's, it's just one of the things you can't really predict how, you know, shit's going to go out until it happens. No, no, no. So, uh, moving, moving on, man. Um, favorite album of the year so far. Let's rock it. What do you got for me? I would have to say, um, fuck, what is it? Uh, Denzel Curry's uh, latest album that he dropped. Um, I've been rocking with that for for a bit now. Just, let me fucking double check that that name because I was just listening to it earlier. Mm. Uh, but, 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 but Denzel Curry and um, a lot of Dreamville uh, records. Okay. Melt My Eyes, See Your Future is the name of the album. Ah, okay. Now is is Denzel Curry um because he's from Florida? Is that his is that his draw for you or is that just a coincidence? I'd say that's more of a coincidence. Okay. I started listening to him more so after I seen a couple of interviews mm -hmm. where he himself is a huge nerd as well. Right. Like he draws anime, he does like a bunch of like merch and he has like anime bars in his lyrics too. It's a very common theme, I think, among celebrities now to just have like, you know, um uh what are the oh, fuck. I gotta grow me for this. What are this like the um, the figures, the um, the Japanese robot figures, not Transformers. Oh, the Gundams? Gundams, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like every fucking like rapper has Gundams in the background of their fucking music videos now. So, I mean, yeah. Dude, Gundams are, are the shit, but I've, I've been listening to him more um, after that. And also he dropped a cover a while back that was a cover to um, Bulls on Parade by Rage, Rage Against the Machine. And I personally thought he killed it. And like put his own little twist to it. Yeah. So I, I started listening to him more and more and yep. just loved like that energy he brings to his that, records. Those covers, you know, it's it's crazy. I tell my fuck I tell my musician friends all the time, is like, yo, bro, just put out a cover every week. Put out a cover every week. I don't care what else you do, just put out a cover every week. It's easy. Guess what? You know the words, you sing it in the microphone, you edit it, it takes you thirty minutes in audition. You make a video on your iPhone, it takes you another thirty minutes in premiere, you edit it, it's easy. Make a cover every week, and like that's how you'll pop. They're like, no, we need to make our own sound. We need to make our own music. I'm going to make my own lyrics. I'm going to write my own stuff. That's great for your 30 Spotify plays. But the covers and the SEO around someone else's song is what gets you popping on the... Like, I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's how you found this artist. That's how you found Denzel Curry. 
Yeah, and there's actually um a couple of rock bands that have been blowing up because of the covers. Uh, I know one of them specifically is I think Our Last Night. Okay, they've done covers to um, was it uh Black Beatles? They've done covers of uh, like Katy Perry and a bunch right. of other like bigger easy bigger name artists. Easy, easy, and it's like it's insane too because every time I hear every time I hear like a song and it, it, it matches the vibe of one of my friends who can sing. I wish I could fucking say, if I could fucking sing, it'd be game over. If I could fucking sing, I'd be up here recording cover. Like I'm right here. I'd fucking hit the instrumental on YouTube, hit record on the mixer and fucking sing it, edit it quick. And just, it'd be a video out every week. If I could sing, it'd be fucking game over because I'd be everywhere. I'd hear every song and I'd be like, "Oh, I could sing." Like, "Baby, baby, you're my sun and moon." You know what I mean? Just like, "Fuck yeah. you." Like, you know what I mean? Just sing it. And like every time I hear the songs, I'm like, "Ooh, that sounds like a song Scott could cover." And then I'll sound be like, "Bro, cover this." Like, "A, I would love it. B, Megs would love it. C, the people would love it. And D, you'd sound really good because it matches your vibe and I know you and I know you can do this." Oh, well, I'm actually working on, you know, my fifth album uh, right now for for Spotify and SoundCloud. And it's I just I don't have time to do covers. And I don't really want to do the covers of the games and all. the. And it's just like, what? Like, what? What? Just sing the damn song, the fucking instrument. You don't even got to make it. Just download it. Like, what are yeah. you can just buy it now for ten dollars somewhere. There's some other kid made it. Give them credit. Like, you know, just do what. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Let me- let me ask you this because you know Justin pretty well. Yeah. When, when is he dropping that Freaks and Geeks? <laughs> I don't think it's ever. No. You will not. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> I I think I just, I think I receive official word. I might have a message saved in Snapchat that says Justin's rap career is officially over. Oh, man. But okay. dude, here's, he, here's <laughs> the thing. He, he gets in these, he gets in these moods. He gets in these flows. He gets in these, in these little mind pockets of his where he's like, yo, I could take over. I could come back <laughs> could right back. now. I could re-record Skinny Capris or whatever fucking thing he did in 2008 over a freaks and geeks beat or whatever it is that you want him to do and it'd be fucking great but he won't do it because he'll sit there and he'll edit the shit out of it and he'll re-record it and he'll say it's not perfect and he'll compare it to whoever else is in new york city who's trash at the time because they all are like i for whatever i don't give a shit hot take i'm sure florida where the town you live in has better rappers than new york city like what are we talking about so it's like you know i don't think he'll ever i think it's done I think he might be yeah. done. He came back a little bit in COVID. He joined um, Facebook, launched, I think it's called Bars, I think. Like wh- some company launched Bars, which was like a TikTok competitor, but for rappers that was supposed to catch on. So he has a couple on there that I think we even repurposed for on TikTok. So if you search for Kodak on there, you might be able to find those. And again, it's just, it's, it's a new beat, but that's all we got. So, I mean, it's not, I don't think okay. it's, uh, unfortunately, brother, I do not want to disappoint you, but it's, <laughs> I don't think it's coming. Um, but yeah. what we, all right. what we did get last night was God did by DJ Khaled. We excited about I'm, that. We partial. How's your opinions on I'm, Khaled? Where are you at? You, uh, go for it. Go, go, go. I'm partial on, on Khaled more so because, he can have some pretty good songs, some pretty catchy, you know, mm-hmm. beats and clever hooks and everything. Like, right. But a lot of his stuff is just repetitive. <laughs> like he, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. He just brings the artist on. So anytime that he drops an album, I'm just one of those like, oh, cool. I'll check it out here and there. Whatever one but, little baby's on, whatever one Drake's on. Yeah. And that's probably it. Right. Yeah, because those are the ones that are probably the, like the biggest hit uh, right now. Yep. So, so uh, here's the thing, though. In the past, that 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 featured artist list, it's that's always his draw, right? Everyone knows that it's yeah. a DJ Khaled album, right? So, but that that's always the draw. And in the past, it's been okay. He's been ramping up, but like, let's. Khaled spent all of his PPP money on this one because like he's got fucking, we've got multiple tracks with Drake on it, which is about 90% of the budget right there. More than one track with Drake. I mean, what's your budget, bro? 
So, and then, of course, Lil Baby is on. So that's like the other 9% to Drake's 90. And then, dude, I mean, you can't kind of knock it when the rest of the track list goes Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, Kanye West, Eminem, Future, Lil Durk, 21 Savage, Take Off, Future, uh, Siza, S-Z-A, I don't know how to pronounce that guy. Or her, I'm, I'm okay. not sure. Uh, Travis Scott, Gunna, Lado, City Girls, Juice World, Jadakiss, and probably a couple others that I missed. But like, you know, what the fuck? Like this album should be number one at every level. Like every song, like when Drake drops his albums, maybe not whatever that last one was that he did. But like when <laughs> Drake when one. Drake drops his decent albums, every one of those songs is Billboard number one, two, three, four, five, and six. So like, but Khaled's albums don't have that reputation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like what, and I think, I think you and I are kind of on that same page. Like we, we see the hits, we listen to the Drakes, we listen to the babies. And then we're like, kind of, you know, brushing it off. The Kanye West song's interesting. It's like, it's a gospel track, of course. Um, but you know, it's, it's interesting. And I think, um, will it be enough to knock Nikki, who I think is like the only OVO Fest YMCMB artist not on this album. Wayne and Drake are. I don't, I don't know about the fucking. Is YMCMB still even like, where's fucking Lil I, Twist? Like, where the fuck? Where's the new album from <laughs> Lil Twist and Lil Chuck? Because I've been waiting since two th since fucking Bedrock dropped. I've been waiting <laughs> for fucking, where's Chanel West Coast's project at? Oh my god! Huh? Is it coming? I is she even <laughs> rapping anymore? <laughs> well, she's pregnant now. She's she, she's having a baby. So, ah oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> but I I definitely. So to answer your question, yeah, I don't I don't think his album is gonna top Nikki's. No, and well, I think her. I, it's I'll, I don't know if it's is Nikki is does Nikki have an album out? I just know her singles number one. I think she she might be dropping something. Soon. Sure, right, right, yeah. right. But even if like she were to drop something now, I still think it would be higher up than than DJ Khaled's. You think like, Nicki Minaj solo album with maybe five, six, whatever sprinkled features in? You think just the power of Nicki Minaj does better than Khaled's like fucking million billion dollar star studded list? And it's probably gonna be a hot take, but yeah, I definitely right. agree. I definitely say so because Listen, it has been proven because just because you have like big hits on on, yeah. a, on an album doesn't mean it's gonna be a good album. Listen, statistically, nine times out of ten, every time we're at a wedding and I'm I'm DJing and I I hit the next track and all the fucking girls here, let's go to the beach, beach, <laughs> let's get away, bay, bay. It, they're scre they scream every time because yeah. it's like fucking Nicki Minaj. Holy shit at a wedding. This dude, like, holy, I love this bit. You know, so it's like, it's insane. So I the, the draw of Nicki Minaj, I don't, mm, does she still have it? I think her last album didn't do so well. So I think we're going to see, but I think she's been on, I mean, she her single's number one right now. So maybe that'll prove me wrong and we'll come back to this and we'll know at a later date, but <laughs> if her album drops soon, it might've dropped already. We're not sure, but, um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So to the other side of the rap game, uh, and this is Justin's opinion. So we'll give him credit where it's due. I kind of have credit for the back half, but we'll get there in a minute. Justin's opinion. And this is kind of true. Hear me out. Uh, there can only be one hot white rapper at a time. And Eminem doesn't count. He's grandfathered in his greatest of all time. He'll always be hot. Whatever he drops goes bananas. So hear me out. So here's the history, right? Early 2000s, okay. Paul Wall and Asher Roth, okay? Both white rappers. You know every word to I Love College by Arthur Asher Roth. I know you do to this day, yeah. <laughs> okay? Everyone knows it. Don't know where he went. I think he might. I think he's still in college. I think he might still be in college. We're waiting for him to graduate, right? <laughs> so then, so then we get to like Mac Miller genre. Rest in peace. You know what I mean? We get half a logic because, to my despise, I thought he was white. People tell me he's half black. So we got half a logic there, and with Mac Miller, just because he was hot at the time, and he kind of sort of still is. Um, then after Mac Miller and Logic, right? They kind of fade out a little bit. 
Then what happens? Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, Thrift Shop comes into play on every fucking radio station on the goddamn planet for a year and a half. Then after Thrift Shop, we need a little feminine help, okay? So we got Iggy Azalea popping, okay? I'm So Fancy is, you know, undoubtedly a bop, okay? Then next up, g Easy's famous, okay? We've got him telling us he's a Sagittarius every five minutes, all right? <laughs> Then we got Lil Dicky. I know you know every word to save that money. We played at weddings every yep. weekend. It's insanity, okay? He's kind of faded, even though Dave on HBO, dope. Love that show. If you haven't watched Dave on HBO, go watch it. Then now he's kind of faded. Then we get like our fucking little SoundCloud guys, Lil Peep, rest in peace, Lil Xan. He's kind of retired now. And then after they came back, we went more mainstream and my boy MGK fucking took the way, okay? Now- MGK got a little depressed. Something happened. He started painting his nails. Not saying you're depressed with your painted nails, but MGK <laughs> was, and now he's a rock star. Eminem dissed him, and now he's a rock star, which is fine. So we don't consider him a white rapper anymore. So now the mantle's back up for grabs. Here comes my homeboy. I own 12 of his Funko Pops Post Malone. Okay? He's only got three, but I have 12. Ask me about it later. <laughs> so Post Malone's now hot, right? And so then now we're in our 2020, 2022 area, era, area, era, we've got Jack Harlow. Okay. You give an maybe kind of sort of thumbs up to Jack Harlow, but I don't think any of those other white rappers had a debut album with a Drake feature on it. I know I keep riding Drake's dick here for a minute, but we can't deny the man who has a hundred billion dollar private jet with his goddamn owl logo on the side and his number one hits every three yeah. weeks. Like, I'm sorry, but it's just where we're at. I understand that some people might think Jay Z is the greatest of all time living. I'm not talking about like Tupac and Biggie and all that shit, but like living Jay Z, maybe, but like, I don't see Jay on the charts and being requested at weddings and like fucking on your playlist all that much. Like I get it. 444 was a great album, but like, is it still on anyone's playlist? That is true. I, I kind of have to agree with that. With that, with that take. Huh? One white rap, one white rapper at a time. Macklemore's trying to come back, but ever since he dumped Ryan Lewis, I told Kodak, "This is what happens when you dump your best friend." He dumped <laughs> Ryan Lewis, and now he doesn't make any money as an artist. He's got to go on tour with Imagine Dragons, who just have the same song over and over and over again. But yeah. the kids, they like to hear it, and it's fine. So whatever. So listen, I mean, you know what I mean. So Jack Harlow's hot right now, and. I don't see any other white rappers stepping up. What, Chet Hanks? I think, well, he's technically Jamaican when he's rapping, but that's, you know, his own deal. Fucking weirdo. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. No. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I could definitely see that. And also for the fact that nowadays, is like if you have Drake on your debut album, that's it's going to guarantee almost a success. It's going to skyrocket you. Um. Yep. He's definitely one of the, the more popping white rappers out right now. And while there are some songs that I do like, some that I find catchy and I'll listen to and everything like that, mm -hmm. I don't think he brings anything new to the table. <laughs> so like it's something that we've heard before, but it's, it's not his... a broken, it's not a bad thing. Right. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And he got he got decent flow, he got decent bars. Yep. It could be better. I, I'll say that. It we'll see where a sophomore. We'll see where a sophomore goes, and we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where that goes, and and where the next, few, excuse me, the next few months take us. We'll see if maybe there if someone else steps up or not. Now, back to a whole nother side of it. Whole nother side of the rat. And I love this conversation because we've started out. We've started out with like your the rapper you like, who honestly I I've I've never heard of him. I and I will certainly listen to his music, um, but I don't think he's is he quite is he mainstream? Would you consider mainstream? I, I consider I'll consider him a little bit mainstream just because he was on the 2016 Double XL freshman list mm. with like Lil Uzi and all that stuff. So I kind of gave him a bad rap in there. But Got it. He's He's still really good compared to like everybody else. Okay. So we've gone from like that 
to now, you know, DJ Khaled, all the big hitters, down to all the white kids. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got to say it that way. It's fine. <laughs> but now, apparently, and I didn't listen to the whole damn thing because it's like 12 minutes long. The game, for whatever reason, thinks that he can now uh, come at the great Eminem. Now, do I need to state the obvious? Jeff, can you tell the people the obvious factor here? It, it, it's terrible. I, <laughs> I, I suffered through the, the whole 12 minutes. Oh, you listen. Okay, perfect. So I, I can listen, you please, can you please it. break down the entire, go, oh, you have 12 minutes, my friend, break down the entire thing for me because I listened to like, was the very beginning like a move? Like, was there, was it a movie? It wasn't even a song or something. Like I skipped a part that was just audio for some reason. I, I think it's one of those like, like an interlude an or inter- whatever. Yeah, like an interlude, just, just like an introduction to the song. Right, right. It it really did not need to be there, <laughs> but part of the part of like that that whole diss or song, whatever. It felt part partially like a diss and partially like a he's paying homage to to Eminem mm. because the entire time he's rapping about how nobody listens to any of his albums, but makes references from almost every single Eminem album ever. And wait, who doesn't listen to Eminem albums? I, I think there's, I, I would find it very hard to, I, I've, I've got it. I've got the Marshall Mathers LP CD in my car right now, loaded up, ready to go. Yeah. I've got, what do you, what do you, like, who does it? What do you mean? No one listens to Eminem album. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Well, according to the game, apparently nobody listens to hit to Eminem's albums. No one listens but, to the games album. When was the games yes, last yeah, album? Exactly. Exactly, and he recently dropped an album with that that same song. And like, dude, who? What kind of bitch? Back. Okay, listen, I don't know, I don't know shit about rap beef or the the logistics or what happened. I'm well versed on what happened between Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem because I followed that quickly. I think Machine Gun Kelly won. I'm sorry, but listen, uh, from what I understand, he don't put a diss track like an entire diss track on an album like when eminem sprinkles them in throughout that's fine mm-hmm. right but like isn't it is a diss track common on an entire like an album like track number nine of your full blown album it can be if it's like a pretty heated like beef between the two there's okay. like a lot of going back and forth okay but i i'm definitely disappointed in, in the game with when it comes to this album because it seemed like this track was just the center point of the entire album. Yeah. Well, for, well he, that's the only reason he did it because, because yeah. the game releasing an album in 2022 makes zero sense. No one's talking about it except indie podcasters. So like, what are we taught? Like there's no one the, the mainstream media, double XL fucking whatever online news article that, that he needs to pick it up, whatever Spotify playlist he needs to be on. He won't be because it's yeah. the game in 2022. And so, um, you know, and I'm sure the fan base is there. I'm sure most people know about the game and like his loyal fans and people like, listen, I don't know shit about Kevin Gates or his last album, but fucking Tyler Edwards can tell you every fucking track and why he did it and what he was going through when he wrote this and did this and did that. So, I mean, I get it. I'm sure the game albums this year is great, but like when it comes to, Eminem and where he's at and what Eminem's doing the fucking Super Bowl. Eminem's got fucking boomers and grandparents talking about him because they see him on their TV. Like Eminem yeah. is like is not is not like do you know what I mean? Like do you know what I'm trying to say? It's just it's kind yeah. of like this they're not in the same playing field currently or maybe at one point they were, but not anymore. And so to like use that on an album to like because that's his only put that's the only reason we're talking about it i wouldn't have brought up the game today if you fucking didn't diss eminem on an album yeah so it, i mean it's working obviously but like it like that's kind of that's like it's a low blow it's cheap yeah it's definitely cheap because i the game does have some really good songs and you know really good bars and everything yep but just to you know try to gain a little bit of clout and a little bit of you know, attention from this, just this one song. It's it's kind of disappointing, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently rumors have it in the Twitter sphere is a wad pod first. I think it might be an exclusive. I don't know. I think other people might know. Eminem has a response recorded. Oh shit. Okay. Yes. According to insiders close to him, there is a response recorded. 
Um, but people have told him to just A, leave it alone. B, you don't need to worry about it. Like, it's the game. Uh, so we don't know if it'll get launched or not. So, um, yeah, man. What are you, uh, final thoughts on Eminem? Would you, would you take on Eminem in a rap battle? <laughs> Me personally, uh, you know, with a little training from Justin, I could probably do it. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You and Justin link up, and then you guys both take on Eminem together. We got this. I mm-hmm. believe in him. Yeah, of course. I think he'll be fine. He'll just give you the same 16 <laughs> to 32 bars that he's been rapping that he puts in every freestyle every three years, and then you'll be fine. As long as you know, you know, York City, bitch, I do it. Is like, is all the fuck it. That's how everyone's, that's all, it starts the same way every time. <laughs> he'll hate me for saying that, but oh. it's fine. Um, so Jeff, very serious question. Listen, man, we joke a lot on this podcast and here's the thing, dude, we are, uh, next week. Here's a bit of a sneak peek announcement. Not next. Is it next week? Is it next week? It might be next week. It's either next week or the week after we're talking to, uh, Tim 20 minutes. Wow. It's okay. Uh, we're talking to our friend Tim 20 minutes and, uh, he's, uh, he's got a mental health podcast as well. So a lot of mental health here. Listen guys, we joke a lot on this podcast and I might cover stories about fucking, you know, people who aren't in their best mental health and we might make jokes there at their expense, but listen, it's a satire and comedy podcast. Just understand that. But we do sometimes need to have conversations. So Jeff, I will ask you, sir, friend, how's your mental health? Man, um, Mental health is, is is a pretty big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, as someone that struggles with it, um, I still have my ups and downs. You know, throughout the weeks, yep. throughout the days, I've learned been learning more about myself ever since I moved down here. Been trying to better myself. <clears throat> mm-hmm. How um, how was the uh, how was the process of finding doctors? Moving from Pennsylvania to Florida, you got to find new psychiatrists, therapists, doctors, physicians, whatever. Uh, when, when, when did you move and when was that, what, uh, how was that process? I moved in September of 2019. Okay. So the market was a little, still a little as it is now then probably, right? Yeah. So we're, we're, what were you like six, nine months out on all your appointments? I think the, the last time I actually had an appointment before I moved down was probably like a year before. Right. And I was just struggling. Yeah. Honestly. Yep. And trying to find a new like psychiatrist down here, a new doctor and everything. It took roughly maybe like a year in Mm -hmm. before I found anything. Yep. No. And it's, I mean, bro, it's, 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 it's insane. I mean, the, 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 the healthcare system in this country is, is it fails more and more every day. And for some reason we're not doing anything about it. Um, this year, honestly, uh, I, I haven't had health insurance in six, seven, eight years, just because of the price, the cost. I haven't been to the doctors, the therapist, nothing, nada for five, six, seven years. You know what I mean? It's always been keep it inside, do what you're going to do. You're 22 and healthy. You can drink like a fish this night, wake up the next morning, go to work at 9 a.m. Just fine. What the fuck do you need? What are your problems right now, bro? You're 25 living on your own. You're having a grand old time. You can do whatever you want. Right. Then 2019 yeah. rolls around and you're almost 30. You're having a kid and you're still doing the shit you were doing five years ago. Like some things need to change. So this year is the first year in a while that I've actually had health insurance. And so I started this journey this January. Right. Uh, when I called places, first of all, I'm sure you're aware, and I've said it multiple times on this podcast, but, uh, the fucking, the system in this country, I'm online on the thing that they give you for the insurance that I have, the portal. And it says Dr. ABC accepts your insurance and they're accepting new patients. So when I call ABC doctor and they say, well, unfortunately at this time we're not accepting new patients or your insurance. So sorry, can't help you. I said, wait a minute. What? That happened 30 times, bro. I called for three hours, everyone on the list, and I got through to maybe one person. And when I tell you my first psychiatry appointment ever in my life that I have scheduled was scheduled January of this year, it's on December 6th at 2 p.m. So let's hope I don't put a fucking gun in my mouth before that. 
Or, you know, let's thank God I'm pretty okay to go till December. Like, let's just, let's, let's take a step back. And if I was an actual person with, you know, maybe some more serious problems other than, you know, anxiety, depression, and everything else we all have going on, like December? Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. I called back in March just to double check, just to make sure it wasn't me, to make sure I wasn't the problem. In March, they were scheduling out to next February. It's just like, you know, it can't, you can't, you, what, 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 what? What? Yeah. And meanwhile, Megs, Megs is on her fucking healthcare journey. She knows she has ADHD. She has misdiagnosed anxiety and depression for ADHD in women. It's a thing. Everything adds up. She's done the fucking research. She's not just some millennial saying, I think I have ADHD. Eh. You know, she's done shit. I've watched this girl watch videos. I've watched her take notes. She has an iPad full of information. And these doctors, and unfortunately, we don't have the best relationship with the parents. So, like, they can't vouch for what she was like when she was 12. Because for whatever reason, we can't give you ADHD shit unless you were diagnosed before you were 12 or without your parents when you're 30 for some stupid reason. And so it's like, bro, what do you mean? And, like, she finally got it. After a year and a half of going to psychiatrist, 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 trying this pill, this pill, this pill. She tried a different pill every three weeks. And I'm like, is this good for you? What's going on? Like, what? Some of them work. Some of them don't. What, why are we switching medications every day? Well, this is what Dr. fucking Lenny at the fucking thing says. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, okay, all right, just do you. She's finally in. And now she's finally getting tested for ADHD. And guess what? It's She went to test one out of two. And the doctor's like, well... Sounds like what you're kind of describing is just anxiety and I don't know. It just doesn't seem like why your job as a doctor is to do the best for your patients. And when she comes in with research and she presents the signs and she does this and she does that and she checks all the boxes, that's when you're supposed to believe them. But if they're coming into your office fucking going like this and like, doc, listen, I need more. I need fucking, I need, I need 12 more bottles. Like if they're, if they have a problem, then don't help. Like, let's like, can we not just be smart about it? I thought there was an opioid epidemic in this country. But when I told my physician, my doctor, who thankfully I got in right away with that my psychiatry appointment wasn't until December, she's like, well, let me help you. Let me get, uh, maybe I can prescribe you something before we can get there. That'll help. So for the first time in my life at 30 years old, I got prescribed medication. First time picking up pills, never bought pills before in my life. I picked them up from eggs before. That's fine. My parents, my dad was a believer in like, Hey, you're fine. Go outside and play you know what i mean i never mm -hmm. got anything as a kid or a teenager or whatever i just grew up without it it wasn't for me and so for the first time at 30 here i am picking up prescriptions i've been picking up for mags for the last three years hers are free a dollar a dollar free a dollar people were telling me there's an opioid epidemic in this country people are dying left and right from these pills that they're getting from pharmacists and prescribed to them and opioids and fucking all this shit and there's a problem and when I go to get my pills for the first time in my life at 30 years old, it's fucking $60 for a, a, a month's supply. And I'm like, bro, Fuck. I thought you people were passing this shit out like candy. And I got to pay 60 right. bucks a month? What? I mean, I'm not complaining. It's fine. But like, Jesus Christ, on top of my insurance bill. Like, I'm sorry for ranting once again. But dude, the, 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 the mental health care in this company, I'm... Are you, so you're, you're, you're kind of on track now. You're, you're good to go. It was a little rocky there, but where, where are we at in 2022? We're okay. I, I'll admit it. And I'm pretty, um, transparent about this in, on my own podcast. Of course. Yes. Um, we're going to get to that in one second. Yep. I, 2022, I've had, still have my ups and downs, Yeah. but it's more that I try not to rely so much on the medication. Uh-huh. Um, because I was diagnosed at, with bipolar. So that plays a huge effect on like my moods. So I've been trying different things to, you know, elevate, like mediate like my moods. So I don't have to rely heavily on the medication, whether that's be meditation, um, going to the gym, which mm -hmm. fitness does play a huge role in yep. some, in some walks. Mental yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So and I mean, and you're doing, taking your dog. I'm sure that that by what I just seen from your dog, I'm sure he <laughs> requires at least five miles a day. So, yeah. So lots of walks. Um, and honestly, as much of a somewhat of an introvert that I am, actually going out and socializing is a, it's a huge part of it. Mm. Um, even though I don't 
necessarily need to open up. It's just right. more having that, you know, interaction with people that does help elevate the mood a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And I mean, and I think, I mean, it's honestly, I'm, uh, Megs and I are, are those we're, we're in the clamshell. We have like six friends. We don't go, we don't really socialize and we're trying to like go out more and do shit. But I mean, like, dude, COVID fucked us all up. I mean, you can't put, you can't put 350 million people inside for a year and a half and not expect that like, it's not going to have repercussions on the human psyche. We're supposed to be like, outside and breathe fresh air and interact with one another and not like in our beds, like just dr drinking the wine we can get from wine and spirits real quick on, you know, the lottery that we had here. But like, it's just fucking, it, it's insanity. You know what I mean? But like, mm -hmm. that's all we did. That's all we did over COVID. We drank like fish. We ate Burger King and Taco Bell. We went to the grocery store when we had to, and we, we, we put an inflatable mattress in our living room to, to have camp outs because we were losing our minds like we were just, Megs and I had an inflatable, our second inflatable mattress because our first one popped after a week, just playing Monopoly in the living room till 2 a.m. because that's all we could fucking do. We were sick of drinking. We were sick of everything else. We were sick of the shows. We watched Tiger King twice. And it was like, bro, what can we, fu and it was just like, hey, it broke a lot of people. And it's like, some of them didn't make it out. And it's unfortunate, but like, that's where we're at now. And, you know, I, th th we're just not, nothing's in place for, for what they were expecting. Like where all of our focus is over here with, you know, it's the vaccine and we got to get all this and we got to do this. And it's the war in Ukraine and we got to do this and we got to do that. And Biden and the student loans and all this and all that. And it's like, Hey man, like, take a look at your people. What's going on? What's why, why are 90% of the people in Los Angeles homeless? Why are tents everywhere? Why, why is Burger King still in 2022 closing at 7 p.m. because they're short-staffed? Where did everyone go? No one's doing anything. And it's like, hey, man, we've got to get, like, this can't be the new norm, you know? I, I definitely agree. And there's, there's a lot of things that, that needs to be fixed within this country. And it's as much as, you know, I, I have my own gripes with, with everything that's been going on lately. There's a lot of things that we need to do as a people to, you know, be able to, I guess, like live better lives. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> ah, there's a lot of things that we can do in terms of government that can be fixed and help everyone. But there's, it's always going to be political and there's always going to be somebody like on either side saying like, well, this is not going to benefit me. So I don't want it. Yeah. And nobody wants to think about the, the greater whole. Right. Right. Well, and I mean, and that just kind of, that leads us just kind of into the next thing and it just kind of all wraps up together, which is, I mean, the, uh, listen, I know, I don't know about you as a podcaster. I know my friend Carlos, all of his interactions are very positive and very supportive, but, uh, <laughs> the comments I've been receiving on my videos these last few weeks have been just, I mean, bro, thank God I didn't get the notification I did the other day standing on top of a building because I would have walked off. You know what I mean? Like it just, yeah. and I mean, it's, I, I joke about it because that's just how I, it's, it's, it's a very serious and dark topic. And it's like, you know, obviously I'm not, you know, suicidal or I'm not about to just walk off a building because of a YouTube comment, but that's how it made me feel. Like, I mean, the, it just, it's, 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 I'll, I'll put them on the screen, but it's just like this kid. Now explain this to me. Can you please, maybe, maybe in your own experience, can you please explain the psyche of a person who does this? But this kid, you, I don't fucking know his name. I don't need to say his name. It's on the, you can go find it yourself if you want to see it so bad. But on like three different YouTube channels, he writes three very nasty long paragraphs to me. One of them is about like just not, you shouldn't be doing a podcast because he thinks that I, I'm so worse off than 90% of them on the internet somehow. 
And the second one was just about my voice cadence and how it makes his ears bleed and like he can't just, what the fuck is going on? This low testosterone piece of shit. Now those are multiple comments combined into my own one that I created in my head, but that's fine. And then he leads me in this last one that's like so long and it's like, you put on this false confidence and like, oh, look at me with my sunglasses and like, you're putting on this character, obviously. And I'm like, for 52 episodes? For 170 hours worth of content? Yeah. I'm fucking, what do you, what the fuck do you think? False confidence, bro? It's because you, because you, because you don't understand. And then guess what, Jeff? He's subscribed. He's a subscriber I, of this podcast. So after it's like, all that. What, what's, what's the, what's the, 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 the disconnect here of just like trying to put people down? It's like, Do you have a podcast? Do you have opinion out there? No? Okay, that's fine. Guess what else you have? Free will. And you don't have to turn this on. I didn't I didn't force you to watch this video. I didn't force you to comment. I didn't force you to download the app. Delete it. Turn off. Like I'm to the whole celebrity mantra, fucking Demi Lovato. I don't feel bad for you talking about I'm so sick and tired. I can't take it watching the documentaries and the things I did in my 20s and the Disney Channel stuff. Turn it off. If it's bothering you that much and it's affecting your mental health in 2022, turn it off. Don't listen to my podcast. Mm -hmm. Nine people do. Nine. And that's fine with me. And it's like, hey, bro, if you're going to be one of the nine, be one of the nine like fucking, I don't know, my other friends who are like, bro, you're classic. Bro, you're hilarious. What the fuck is this? This is hysterical. Like that shit. Because guess what? They understand what it is. And they understand it's a clip taken out of context. And like, they understand that like, I'm not telling you that you should go and join Beachbody because it's going to make you a lot of money. Okay. I'm not sitting here telling you to follow Andrew Tate because I think what he's saying makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? He just put a final, did you see? He just released a final message. His final, like, his cry for help and talking about his father and his lunchbox. I stopped five minutes in. I can't do it anymore. Like, so have you, how many, have you gotten nasty comments yet? Or that's still far from few. Where are we at there on that spectrum? Cause I'm in it, baby. I, well, first I I just want to say like the, the whole thing with the, um, like being overly confident, but I wish I had that. Right. Because I can't, like your personality. You're saying that based off of the kid who said something on my video, is that is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like yeah. I seen that comment, mm-hmm. and I, and every single time that I watched like you know one of your episodes, I'm like, man, I, I wish I had that same type of like upbeat personality because I, I'm I'm just not right. <laughs> that's like, that's definitely like, not me, and I've tried it. Right, right, and it's fine, and that's fine. But like, I'm not like when I sit here and say I'm not putting on a character. And it yeah. really, 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 really amps me up when I see an article that says, hey, you know, this gay dog Fezco got dropped by his owners because they thought he was gay because he was humping another dog at the dog park. So that must mean the dog's gay. Well, listen, even if the dog is gay, guess what? Gay dogs need love, too. That's not an act. That's like just a fucking it's hilarious. It's fucking hysterical. Fuck those people. We love the dog. It's a gay thing. You know what I mean? Like just we're fucking there's a rainbow in the corner of my thing. Like it's pride. We do pride episodes every year on this podcast. At least we try to. Like I'm not like are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Overly confident. I should be more mean. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Thanks, bro. Comma loser. And then he says, there you go. Like that's called comedy and if you don't understand that go away like go to will will smith has got some advice for you you know what i mean (laughs) yeah i've just been noticing lately a lot of people just want they're they're seeking out this like negativity and when they see something positive or somebody doing you know comedy or trying to do something upbeat and lifting they 
tear it down because it's, right. it doesn't conform to what they're, they're yep. used to. Yep. I can't wait. I'm wearing this shirt today because she just dropped a new fucking single with Elton John and it's banging. Oh, shit. And I can't fucking wait for Britney Spears. You know what I mean? I'm going to have sway on this fucking podcast. And guess what, dude? I'm sorry. But we're going to sit in here and we're going to smoke weed and we're going to talk about Britney Spears for an hour and a half. <laughs> and that's going to be a blast. Okay? Much like this episode has been. We're going to wrap it up here soon, but not on a somber note like mental health. We've got some more shit coming, okay? But like, that's going to be fun and they're not gonna get it and it's fine that's yeah. fine bro i'm out here slinging fucking blue chew hats you know what i mean like it's <laughs> it's banging bro i'm having fun i'm having yeah. fun in the last three weeks i recorded uploaded filmed produced edited fucking clipped up did whatever fucking three hours of content in like the last week i'm fucking slinging patreon episodes at 40 minutes a pop i'm doing solo episodes in an hour you and i are hitting two so, like, what do we talk? You know what I mean? Like, just leave me alone. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm running my business. I'm recording a podcast from my desk. It's fun to do. So, when yeah. you say, like, this bro definitely has low testosterone, take his microphone away. Hey, man. <laughs> Fuck off. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. But you know, you know who would never leave me comments like that? And Jeff, uh, listen, I'll be straight up with you. I'm going to be straight here for a second. And I'm not going to beat around the bush because we're honest here in the wad pod, okay? And I know it's a sensitive topic. We just got done talking about mental health. But it was in the dock, and I asked, my, I asked Justin, I asked my friends, I asked people around me if I should mention it, and we all agreed that, like, it was maybe 20% inappropriate. So we're going to roll with it, okay? And in your own words, I would really love to know your honest opinion, but what the fuck is in the water? down in Florida. Like, are you guys just drinking straight from the ocean? Or I mean, is it because I literally, bro, I think there's a no, I swear to you right now, I'm not making this shit up. There's a notification from Reddit right now that says man in Florida represents himself after dot, dot, dot. And it's like, what is, what, like, I think he was just, he was jerking off like a statue of Abraham Lincoln. I mean, what's going on down there? Do you know these people? Are you one of them? And like, what's, what's it like on the streets? Because I haven't been in a while. Uh, so I'm curious what's actually going on. Man, Florida <laughs> is a completely different breed. I yeah. am not going to lie. Um, Keep talking for one minute. I'm going to step away, but go. Are you good? Good. It's it's a completely different breed. I was not prepared for like all the wild shit that I've seen <laughs> like out in the streets, even from going to uh, different car meets or even just driving by some of the wild shit um, you'll see from the people. And I think it's more so like the, the op opioid epidemic that's been going on to the rising cost of housing, just a bunch of like crazy shit, like overall. Okay. So what have you, okay. Um, please tell me and we'll, we'll get, we'll get to the headlines. Here in a minute, but what have you wit what have you seen? What have you witnessed? Um, I've seen a naked dude in on a wheelchair driving in to, into the middle of traffic in like the middle of the day. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. There's That's good. Anything else? Um I, I don't know. I've seen people of the night just to keep it, you know, appropriate. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um just kind of, the best way they can describe it, they were uh, high off their ass, mm -hmm. just on the side of the road, I guess, acting like they were like in a sword fight or some shit. But no swords were involved. There was no machete. No, there, there, was, was, there was nothing. They were just <laughs> sword fighting with air swords. Yeah. And they were kind of like doing that lean back that Jack Sparrow does when he runs. <laughs> but they were standing still. I, I think I know. So when, he get, when, he, when he puts his hand on his chest and he goes like this. Yeah. Yeah, they were doing that while yay, like yeah, it looks like swag. they were sword fighting. It's a little swag, were, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was just so, so what's, weird. What's the what's 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 the deal? Are they all on basalts and PCP and they're just hallucinating off their ass? And that's just what Florida has become because we're just we're just putting our, up our noses whatever floats off the coast of Costa Rica. Like, is that just what it is? I believe so, <laughs> especially with like the with the state laws that they can you know a lot of everything every arrest is like public like information. Right. So the media can just go and grab that. Right. So that's why we have like all these ridiculous headlines. Right. And social media and 
mm-hmm. everything else. It just it, it it amplifies that, and then and then we just get articles. Paul and I just did our. Have you ever done your Florida person birthday? I haven't done that. Oh, okay, Jeff. Well, when's your birthday, Jeff? December fourteenth. Florida man, Florida man, twelve fourteen. Okay, here we go. Your Florida man, and this is like your spirit animal. Uh, your Florida man, Florida man captured on camera trying to break gas station door in order to steal a Pepsi. I mean, listen, <laughs> he. Uh, I see what happened. There's a picture here. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. But it's uh, they. He was stealing a Pepsi, so they locked him in. So he's got a fire extinguisher trying to break out of the. Of the oh, man. <laughs> So, I mean, but yeah, dude, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the headlines, they just, they still, they don't stop. They don't stop. Um, where were you on the day that the man tried to outrun the police on a lawnmower? Were you nearby? Can you start going to the, why don't you start going to these like police chases and crime scenes? And I think that would make for a, is there a, is there a Florida man podcast? where we just roll through each one of these stories every week. Cause if someone hasn't done that yet, we might want to get on it. I don't think that that's been done yet. Are you serious? Come on. I'm Googling right now. Unless there's like a, it's part of a, maybe a true crime documentary. I don't know if there's like a actual podcast about it. There is a Florida man news, Florida man podcast, Florida man, Florida woman. Okay. So there might be, who knows, Florida men or Florida woman. But I mean, it's not, there's only like, I searched for Florida man podcast and only like 10 of them popped up. So we could probably get away with doing one. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, dude, <laughs> what, um, let me see what else, what else, what else, what else, what else himself after killing a rooster. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'd probably defend myself if I killed a rooster too. Mm, posing as a Disney employee, stealing R two D two. That's a good one. That's a good one. Have you? Uh, tell me about while while I Google some Florida man stories. Tell tell me about your. Uh, are you like a Disney kid? Have you gone to Disney? Do you despise them? What's your opinions on Disney and and their role down there? Uh, Disney. I'm on the fence because Disney has been doing a lot of like a uh, monopoly takeovers type stuff. But I'm still a huge Disney kid, especially now that they <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> taken in like Marvel and Star Wars. The world, right. right? Yeah, it's. But I've also had kind of a bad experience going to Disney World for the very first time ever in my life. Oh, really? I, when was yeah, this? Was this younger? Or like now? It was um, a couple of years ago, probably in 2016, 2015 or so. Okay. And I went. I went there with an ex. It was like my very first time. <laughs> Going there, so I was hyped. She was like on on some bullshit, so like it kind of like ruined my day. Like what? She, like what? She wanted to get a picture with Mickey, and you didn't. You didn't let her, or what? She wanted to hold your hand, and your hands are sweaty. Like what kind of bullshit could you possibly fucking be on when your boyfriend takes you to Disney World? <laughs> Apparently, it was more so that she didn't want to be there with me. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't really get care at the Jesus time. Christ. I was having the time of my life. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I was having the time of my life. You were you committed to this girl, or just it was just a random girl you picked up? I was committed. It was very like one sided. Got it. Okay. Well, listen. Hey, we we've all seen the fucking Depp and Heard trial. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, it's some of these females out here. I, t- I keep telling Megs, you ladies, we let some <laughs> of you go a little far off the leash, and you just need to be real back. She fucking smacks me every time. I fucking love her. she smacks me every time. <laughs> Listen, now this man, this man is smart, okay? Here's the headline. Florida man suspect, uh, Florida man suspected of using private plane to draw a giant radar penis. So he basically just went in his plane down in Florida in a giant penis shape pattern so that the radar would pick him up and draw a penis on the screens. Presumably, I'd imagine probably like the, the neighbor across the street who's banging his wife is probably like an ADA, like person who watches the radars. So he probably rented like a private jet and then went up there and like drew a big dick knowing that John across the street was watching, knowing that he knows he's fucking his wife. That's probably what happened. To be honest with you, that's probably the story. You know what I mean? I'm, dude, I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of communities that have like private um, like planes as part of their houses. Oh, oh, wait. 
let me ask you this because we covered it a couple weeks ago. The um, the villages, the villages of Florida. Is it true the loofahs on the golf cart? Is that a true fact or not? Is that do you know about this? I've heard of it, and I think I asked one of my friends out here, and they confirmed that it is true. It is true. Holy yeah. shit. See, I knew I was a fucking good podcaster, dude. Fuck everyone. <laughs> Fuck those YouTube comments. I knew that was true. Dude, that's insane. I'm getting every color. If I ever, when we go down, I said it before, I'll say it again. If we ever do it, I'm getting a golf cart and I'm putting a whole rainbow of loofahs. I'm confusing the shit out of everybody. <laughs> it's insanity. Insanity. Okay. Uh, Florida man. Okay, well, that one's weird. Florida man breaks into ex-girlfriend's house. Jeff, was that you? No. Oh, okay. I, I oh, it says, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It says here, Florida man. It says Florida man breaks into ex-girlfriend's home and shits on belongings. My apologies. My apologies. Okay, that makes sense. Florida man charged with assault with deadly weapon after throwing an alligator through Wendy's driving through window. Now, listen, this one makes sense, and I think... I, and I want to talk to you about this too, and then we'll wrap it up. But listen, so he threw an alligator through Wendy's drive through Now, unfortunately, and thankfully, it is closed now because the Wendy's right down the street from me was trash. They had people in there. We've talked about it on the podcast before. You can go look it up. But that place needed to be burnt to the ground, and they finally closed it up. Thank God. I would have thrown an alligator in that bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> But listen, have you heard this? Have you seen the documentaries? Have you heard the theories? Do you know what's going on? The crocodiles are going from your Florida fresh waters to your Florida salt waters, and they're eating the sharks. I have not heard of that. The only thing I've heard of was like the iguanas like falling out of the trees when it gets cold. But yeah, we don't give a shit about the iguanas. What I care about is the alligators eating the shark. When we get off the call, I need you to go look up alligators eating sharks in Florida's. And there's a whole series. Ah, oh, fuck. It's either on Netflix or Disney Plus. But they do, dude. And apparently, according to Idaho Joe, he found a fossilized piece of shit that had an, uh, from a shark that had alligator teeth in it, and it only had it on one side, which means the alligator bit it when the shit was still in the shark, which means alligators have been biting sharks for like billions of years. And so now these, these, and it's, there's more and more reports, bro. How many fucking reports? Look it up. Google alligators in the ocean and you'll see them. They're adapting to the salt water. Okay. And now we're getting like super seriously close to mega shark versus a giant alligator. Okay. <laughs> and I told Megs, listen, no one fucking believes me, but I honestly think Sharknado could happen. Listen, if there's a school of sharks swimming and they're in the tropics and a fucking tornado whips it up, what, what the fuck? What do you mean? Of course they can suck up the alligators into the fucking tornado. And if it's the fucking alligators and the sharks fighting each other, they're going to come and then they're going to spit them all out at us and it's going to be Sharknado. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 55 of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name is Levi McCurdy. Please, please, Jeff, where can they go? Where can they see you? Plug yourself for 30 minutes if you want. What have you got for the people? What are we doing? Well, um, come check me out on the Attack at Random podcast. We're yes. on Spotify. Um, anywhere you actually listen to podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, F- Facebook as well. Now that they've implemented podcast stuff on theirs mm-hmm. too. Going away in three weeks. It'll be gone. Sorry, bud. Oh, damn it. Yep. They, okay, so I was on, I was on the beta <laughs> and then we just got word that like it, they're pulling the plug in three weeks because no one goes to Facebook to listen to podcasts. So they tried it and they're not doing it. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, but it's no good. worries there. Listen, uh, attack at random podcast. It's going to be linked down below. Check out Jeff, follow him at Twitter, uh, crimson, crimson nerd attack at random. Check him out. Listen, bro. Thank you so much. I did not expect this to go for two hours. I'm so (laughs) sorry for wasting your entire afternoon, but, um, we're going to, I really appreciate this. We're going to have this up on Patreon. If you can, uh, sign up for a dollar. If not, I'll send you 12 and you can join it that way. And, uh, this episode will be there first and then we'll get it up live next week for everyone there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's wadpod.com backslash links for everything. Please check out our sponsors this week. It's Entertainment Earth. Go to ee.toys backslash wadpod. You're going to shop with 10% off with that promo code, and you're going to get free shipping if you spend over $40, and you most likely will because they have everything. Check it out. Episode 55. We'll catch you next time, baby. See you next time. Jeff, thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too.